Hi, Charles Millman here. Well, this is part two of the Portable Power Seminar that Timmy Burris and I did at the recent homecoming rally in Summerfield, Florida. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Well, Timmy and I yesterday did a portable power, solar power seminar, and we had common themes, but we both went in different directions on some items, but um, I think they fit together real well. And so Timmy's going to do his presentation right now. Take it away. Okay. The first question I usually get on ours is, can you actually run an air conditioning off of solar? And I'll say yes, with our, our system we can. We have for up to nine hours. Now at the same time, most people think of air conditioning and they want to be able to run 24 hours a day. You're not going to do that with a unit such as what we've got on our camper. Uh, nine hours is, is very doable with our camper as well as running the other items that we've got. Okay, the more common items we want run is going to be something such as refrigerator, lights. We all want to be able to charge our phones back up. Uh, maybe run a 12 volt fan or watch, watch a movie if, if the weather's bad or it's, if it, it's after dark. Uh, so those items, anything that you can get that you can run on 12 volts is going to use less power overall. And those are the more common items we look at. Explain, uh, explain why it's more efficient to do the 12 volt compared to the other. Okay. Once we get the power from the batteries through the charge controller and into the batteries, not having to go back through an inverter, which will take another 5 to 10 percent, some cases a little bit more than that, away from what you're trying to, to use. If you're trying to have a thousand watts that you're going to use over a period of 24 hours off of that inverter, it's going to take 1100 watts or so of power off of your battery just because of the loss going through the inverter. So anything you run off of 12 volts is going to be more efficient just based on that alone uh, as compared to running 110, okay? And that would include things like even even something as simple as a TV. If you're going to watch it two hours, you may wind up using a, another 20 watt hours of power uh, during that period of time, depending on the TV you have also. So what I always tell people, find out what you want to run first, and then start looking at what each different item is going to take. And this is where Charles and I's talks converge very well. Both of us were talking about each of the different components. Figure out what you're going to use. Use a tool that I call the kilowatt. It's available through Amazon. It's available through Harbor Freight. Uh, plug each of those devices in through that kilowatt. If it runs on 12 volts, use your inverter that would plug into the wall. Run that. Run it for 24 hours for a refrigerator. Or run it for a 12 uh, for a two-hour movie. Run it to charge your phones. Figure out what each individual item takes as far as power in watt hours. Put them on a sheet of paper. Start adding them up. Figure out what your needs are and what your wants are. Okay, and as I said, anything that uses 110 is going to use a lot more power. Those would be considered your energy. So hogs. what we're saying is there's no real, it's not a mystery. It's absolute math, and once you've done the kilowatt and know what each one, it's not going to somehow mystically change. It's, it's math, it's science, it's, you, you know what you can do. That is exactly correct. It's, it's just figuring out what each component is, figuring up your total. That will give you the amount of watt hours that you're going to use. You need a power pack that's going to be able to supply that, whether it be a full-blown system or a, a portable unit. You don't want to draw it all the way down to zero. Right. Uh, preferably for a lithium uh, based system you're going to try to use no more than 80 percent of that power uh, with a lead acid battery system you're going not going to want to draw that more than 50 percent if you do you're, you're destroying the life cycle of your battery instead of getting 500 charge cycles out of a lead acid battery you're going to drop that substantially with a lithium uh, ion based system you're looking at typically around a thousand charge cycles lithium iron phosphate you'll get around 2,000 but that's also based on drawing it down 80 or 90 percent and after that 1,000 cycles though it's not like you've got a, a boat anchor it still will run it will just have less capacity correct yes okay. now lead acid batteries that's going to drop substantially compared to the lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate now I'm going to talk about the actual components that make up our system uh, the first is the uh, two solar panels uh, our choice was to go with two 200 watt panels. Uh, we purchased ours from High Tech Solar, bought those off of eBay. Uh, 
total cost on those uh, for two panels is three hundred and twenty dollars uh, from there there's fuses in between each point we've got a fuse then it goes from there to the charge controller the charge controller will take the high voltages coming off the panels in our case it was 44 45 volts total with the two panels and that will drop it down to the voltage to feed the batteries uh, we chose to mount ours on the top of the the runaway we used the the racks that were already there uh, and for us to be able to get them so that they would be stable going down the road, my choice was to actually use muffler clamps to be able to lock the whole thing down. Uh, it's very sturdy. We've had no movement, uh, so that, that part's stable there. Uh, from the panels we came in, we used a charge controller. From the charge controller, it goes to the battery. Our choice was two 100-amp-hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Those batteries are, are roughly $900 a piece. That's the most expensive component of your whole system. Uh, as I've said with all of this, any of the Renogy components, if you watch their sales, they do have discounts. Those can vary from anywhere to as little as 10%. Every once in a while you'll find individual components. I have not seen batteries that low, of a, that much of a discount, but sometimes I've seen them up to 25% for components. Uh, and now that we're on the topic of batteries, people will say, okay, well, why shouldn't I run lead acids compared to lithium or li lithium I with that being lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate? Lead acid batteries are going to be your cheaper choice. They're about a fourth of the cost of a lithium iron phosphate battery. But the catch is if you're looking for space savings, weight savings, you're going to want to go with the lithium iron phosphate battery they'll take up uh, about a fourth of the space uh, as, as that because of the fact you can only draw the lead acid down to half uh, and I say space it's not quite that on space but it is that on weight the lithium iron phosphate for the same amount of usable amp hours of battery you're going to take up four times as much weight so there's your big difference when you're talking about small campers whether it be a runaway, a teardrop, or any other small configuration like that, you're going to want to go with the battery that's going to be one of the lithium-based batteries. So I call it kind of a, I don't know if the term is right, false economy. They think, well, I'm saving all this money, but in, in the long run, the lithium's longevity is much more than the lead acid. Correct. And then plus the weight issue that you're the talking about. Yeah. So you need to not, yeah, I mean, people have the money they have, but they need to get the best bang for their buck, and that's what you're talking about now. Right. With, with the lead acid, you're going to get it for a fourth of the cost, but if you're looking at the fact you're only going to get 400 charge cycle, 500 charge cycles out of it as compared to 2,000 plus, where do I save my money? Okay, now I've got to break the system down, change out batteries. Uh, so you're not saving anything you know, in the long run. And you're also spending more time swapping stuff out and having to go purchase more components and switch them in and out. Uh, you've got a deeper depth of discharge. All of those things make the lithium iron phosphate or lithium ion batteries much better over the long run. Which of those two do you prefer? You keep talking, you keep saying two different kinds of lithium. People are going to go, That's correct. Timmy, tell me why. Okay, okay. We were discussing the fact of uh, we've got two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries in our camper. Uh, those were cho chosen because of the, the amount of charge we could get in them. The lithium iron phosphate will last longer. The other major benefit I said was weight. Each of those batteries is only 28.4 pounds, so we've got 56.8 pounds of battery in there. That's a lot less than you'd have with even an 80 amp hour lead, which gives you only 40 amp hours of, of usable battery, and with this we've got 200 amp hours. Uh, from that part of the system we go to the 12 volt system which we discussed in the camper and all the different components that we're able to run with that. We can use a refrigerator, a fan, a TV with a DVD player. We charge our phones and our lighting in our campers all 12 volt, interior and exterior. Well we started at the camper Timmy and now now we're back home aren't we? Yes, and we so are. you're going to kind of wind it up by uh, going over those components again. Yes. Okay the last component in our system we had talked about 12 volt, now we're going to talk about running 110. Uh, to be able to get from 12 volts back to 110, we've got to have an inverter. That inverter in ours, we have chosen a 1,000 watt Renogy inverter. Uh, that's going to take the 12 volts 
uh, and make it back into 110. The thing is, if you think about it, to be able to get from a small voltage to a higher voltage, we're running a lot of amps. Uh, for a thousand watts of power, you're going to be using about 80 amps of current. That's a very large wire. Uh, what we typically run off of that thousand watt inverter is the air conditioner uh, that uses 385 watts. Uh, we'll use the coffee pot. That one uses even more. It's 632 watts. It is a mainstay, you know, brand from Walmart. It's a basic four cup coffee pot. We may be using a lot of watts there, but we're not using it for very long. That seven or eight minutes that we use it to make a pot of coffee, we'll use 70 watt hours. Uh, as compared to over a nine hour period of time overnight with the air conditioner, we're gonna use over 1100 watt hours. Those are our two big ones. We've run a 350 watt electric heater with it during that same nine hour period of time within the camper. Uh, we've also at times run a electric blanket off of it. Uh, so those are our typical components that we would run off the inverter. And I say that, you got to realize, a thousand watts, you're not going to want to exceed that. You can't run the air conditioner and plug in the coffee pot at the same time. You start looking at those, you're going to run one or the other. And for us, typical is to only run one of them at a time. Okay? Those are all the different components for this system just a general idea for what we've got into our system. The system with 2,560 watt hours of storage cost roughly $2,600, or we're still looking at about a dollar per watt hour, solar panels included with ours, okay? If you watch sales and get the sales at the higher discounts, 15, 20%, you, you would be able to get the system down to about $2,200. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And that would be it. And so the, the main thing we want to go back to is before you think about what you're buying, how am I going to install, and this and that, the questions are, what do I need? What, what are my wants and my needs? What are your wants and needs? Okay, figure those out. Use the tool, the kilowatt. Find out what each of those are going to be. Add the different amounts up in watt hours then figure out which unit will fit you. You may find out you can use one of the power banks, such as a jack rig, and, and from those you can figure that out. You may decide that your use will have you where you need to be able to have air conditioning uh, for that one night in between home and that next campground. At that point, you may want to invest the money and, and be able to say, okay, I'm an off-grid or boondock in a parking lot in between here and there. And in that case, if you need air conditioning, it can be done with the right system. Well, thank you very well, much. Thank you so much. Well, again, I think Timmy did a great job explaining solar systems in relationship to camping. And if you haven't watched part one where he shows you how he put it all together in his range rounder, be sure to watch that. And also, I have a third part that explains another way to meet your power needs using lithium power packs like the Jackery or Align Energy. Below will be links to the products, and I don't do Amazon links, so any of the products he talks about, I'll link below, and you can look them up yourself. Thanks for watching. <laughs>